are here on First Street, South First Street, 208 South yeah. First Street, at the legendary Blind Pig. Uh, we are in the legendary green room of the yeah. Blind Pig upstairs, yeah. Yeah. Um, which doesn't just, you know, we'll, we'll post some pictures, but it's just an awesome place to be in. It's just, it it's, looks cool, feels great, I and mean, it's a lot of fun. And we're here with Jason Barry. Uh, thanks for coming on, Jason. Yeah, no problem. What What's your official title, and, and when did you start the Blind Pig? Uh, I'm the talent buyer, okay. um, one of the managing partners, and uh, I started on September 25th, 1997. Wow. Yep. Right I've been down doing the this since then. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. This has been my gig ever since. So. That's awesome. And yep. so when we got connected, uh, and and I wanted, I wanted some stories about the Blind Pig. I mean, mm-hmm. we talk about institutions in this town for people that grew up here or people that came to school here like this is up this is you know, top three sure um and uh i was told that you're the you're the man with all the stories or at least the connections <laughs> I'm the, I'm all the, the oldest employee <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're 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 the teller of stories so sure, uh sure. when when we thought like we got to get some blind pig stories on we wanted to talk to you so thank you again okay um so to to start you know uh you were, you were just telling me some stories about, you know, you've been here a long time now. Yeah, yeah. But you're still you're still booking talent, some of these mm-hmm. some of these younger younger acts and still what? still feels the same as what? the first year. <laughs> yeah. Still just as exciting and you know, every show is absolutely still different from yeah. the from every other show. That's awesome. Know, thousands of shows later, you know. But uh but yeah, you see some interesting things, you see some interesting uh uh Things that that only you see from this angle, but uh, one of the ones I was telling you about, we just had uh, YBN Corday play, and that's a you know it might be the biggest show of the year for us. Right. We don't know. I mean, it sold out so fast, and um, it was interesting to me to see it because uh, it resembled uh, when Mac Miller played here the first time, uh, his first ever you know Michigan play. It was. It wasn't the same in that um, his show sold out as well. It's just that back then none of us knew who he was. Right. Like, there was no real. He all. All I knew was he had a co-sign from Wiz Khalifa who had played here earlier. So, pretty uh, good. Pretty yeah. good co-sign. Right. right. So yeah. I. So when Peter Schwartz called and was like, "Hey, you want to do Mac Miller?" I was like, "Sure, man." You know, <laughs> it comes from a, an agent I really respect, and it, and he has that co-sign. And then he he was like, "Yeah, check it out." So I checked it out, and I was like, "Wow, he's actually really really good too." You know, yeah. I mean, really good. I remember playing Mac Miller for people like, "Have you heard of this kid?" Because I'm trying to figure out what to offer, you yeah, know, on, right. for the show. And everybody's like, nope, nope. <laughs> and I'm like, well, check it out, check it out. This is great, yeah. you know. And they're like, oh wow, I'll what, go to that show. What you year know? was that? Oh man, when was that? That's a good question. It feels like that was, like, I want to say like 2009, oh, eight, wow. something like a long yeah, time, a long ago. time ago, yeah. But um, but when Matt came, uh, it like he was 17, 18 <laughs> maybe, and then his whole entourage, the oldest person in the whole entourage was 19, <laughs> maybe 20. And we're talking about like tour manager, merch, all that, the whole crew, and then and then whoever was his friends just rolling with him, you know. But the it was a, the whole, it was a lot of them. The whole crew probably should have been in school at the time. Right? Yeah, like <laughs> what are you doing here? Is the true an officer coming? You know. So, uh, but they were all so well behaved and so respectful and and all this, you know. They they were much more well behaved than a lot of grizzled veteran tours you know right. which was really nice and uh i remember we asked him to sign some posters you know um uh, we didn't had no idea how big he was going to be but right. he was just a sweet kid yeah. and his music was dope so and the place was sold out it seemed like he was going to be big you know <laughs> yeah so um but yeah i had we had him sign like um a post i was like sign one to jason barry you know sign one <laughs> to the blind pig and then I was like, hey, would you sign one for my nephew? Because he's graduating from high school and he really likes you. Yeah. And he heard that you were playing and he couldn't believe it, whatever. So he's like, sure. He's just a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm like, wow, this guy's young. But uh, he not only signed it. When I went to get it from him, he had signed it. And then on the back, he had wrote a nice note 
Oh, that's awesome. You know, like something like stay in school type yeah. of thing. It was yeah. just amazing, right? <laughs> that's awesome. And my, my nephew was like, oh, my God, I had it framed for him and whatever. But um, And then YBN Corday, it was kind of – it had the same exact vibe. My my uh, 12-year-old son was up here, and um, it, like he – he was like interacting with the whole tour and they were all saying like the same kind of stuff. Stay in school. You know? <laughs> yeah. All these like platitudes yeah. that were just so sweet. Yeah, yeah. And so endearing, you know. Yeah. And but it was the same thing. There was no adults. <laughs> it was just like YBM yeah, was like the oldest person in this, this crew, you know. I'm like, what is going on? And uh but then when it was time to settle. I'm like, okay, I gotta pay one of these kids thousands of dollars. Like, which <laughs> which kid is gonna which be kid is gonna be in my hand in this check to? Yeah. And uh, uh, for the first time, this like 50 year old man comes off the tour bus. You know, <laughs> comes up here, and I'm like, oh my, God, I'm so happy to see you. You know. <laughs> and we're just chopping it up, and he's like, oh yeah, I played here back in 2000. I'm like, really? I booked that. What, what, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was great. And then. Um, it was clear, like, same thing, where it was, like, everyone was just so sweet and endearing. And uh, the opener, 24 Karat Golden, he, him and my son were, like, really locking in right yeah. up in, the, in my office and yeah. whatever. And last thing, he's, and my, he's like, what are your dreams? You know <laughs> That's I mean? awesome. And my son's like, well, you know, I'm kind of this. He's like, oh, man. And, it, and, uh, and then he's like, uh, my assistant was like, oh, Corbin, you also, you're a break dancer, too. He's like, really? Show me something. <laughs> yeah. So so my son showed him stuff. And then as he's walking out, right, I, I paid him. And then as he's walking out, he's, he turns to my son. And he goes, listen, man, follow your dreams. I, I swear to you, they'll come true. Wow. <laughs> Last thing he said. It was so, like, out of nowhere yeah. that I could tell he was a little embarrassed to be even <laughs> saying this in front of all of us. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But he had to get it out. He had to. Yeah, he had to say it. Awesome. And I was just like, man, I love, that, I love great. all of you. You yeah. know. So do you do you find that those like uh, the the ones that y you expect maybe not not to care or n really mm -hmm. not to be outgoing or nice? Yeah, you get, when they are. Yeah, you get shocked. More, yeah, yeah. I I as a rule try not to meet these rock stars mm. right because i just don't want to be come jaded yeah <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> i don't want to meet them and find out that they're just never awful be, never people. meet your heroes right yeah right? Say, right i love yeah. your music let's yeah. just keep it at that yeah. you know so but but yeah most often everyone is a sweetheart and, yeah um, sometimes it's the case where the tour manager has to be the tough guy. Yeah. Just to deflect, just so the band doesn't have to. Right. But we, we expect that and, and respect it, you know. Yeah, for but, sure. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's, the, it's usually the vets, the touring veterans who give us the most divalicious, you know, behavior. <laughs> you were telling me earlier, it's, it's like rock stars. That rock are the bands, yeah, rock bands are the ones. Yeah, you know? yeah. We don't have the, the proper, uh, you know, Pellegrino water up here, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, we've had. There are there are others. I'm not gonna. I can't. There some of the stories. You know, you don't want to tell because you don't want to like yeah, get them in trouble. We, right. But we had like this one soul singer, and um, you know the the hospitality budgets are limited, so you always get these giant riders that are that if you bought it all, you'd be spending a thousand bucks. Yeah. So when you advance the show with them, you say, Hey, what on here is important that you really need? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, this has happened a few times, but it was really funny. Cause this tour manager goes, look, you see that bottle of whiskey <laughs> <laughs> when he walks in the door, like practically handed to him, <laughs> but, you know, and nothing sure, else. matters. Yeah, nothing yeah. else. matters. He's like, just a, hey, yeah. just have that whiskey ready. <laughs> so we made sure to have the whiskey up here and, I swear to you, he came right in and found it. And it was, okay, cool. <laughs> now funny. we can keep going with this show. You know? That's funny. So you were telling yeah. me, uh, you were telling me earlier that you get, you see all these writers, but by and large, you you don't really follow. You like you read them, but you're not like yeah, going it, out of control. I, I totally remember. get it. Um, you, the writer, the purpose of the writer is to just, um, it's it's almost like let's see how much this person will do for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they give you crazy writers, but then you know in the offer that you send out for the show it, it has a budget yeah and then um so i just stamp subject to budget <laughs> and, then, and that forces them to then advance the show with me and tell right. me really no really what do you need yeah you know? right 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 i've had situations um i remember uh there's a this rapper trinidad james who performed a few, several years ago when his hit record was out 
and um we <laughs> we got him we were i was so excited to get the show because i personally had championed it yeah. i literally heard the track i was like we're doing it <laughs> no one knows who this guy is but we're doing it yeah. you know yeah and um and it sold out and everything so i was feeling real vindicated and then um we for some reason wanted to really hook him up on yeah. his rider so i just kind of got him as rider without even talking about it and it included a bunch of bottles so <laughs> and i never did this again after okay. because i get him his stuff he pulls up in his big tour bus he comes out it's classic it's vintage like i don't you know yeah madness touring madness he comes off the bus 18 people <laughs> come off behind him girls just like you yeah know, it's yeah. just like he's living that dream right now right. you know and uh he comes up they get all their stuff and i was helping them put stuff on their tour bus and i so i've got like four bottles of expensive liquor for him and he couldn't find space <laughs> to put the bottles because every tour had given him all these bottles. So he's opened up cupboards and there's bottles in them. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking, oh, where am I going to put these four? I mean, it's like he's going to open a liquor store. Right, you know? right, right. So, yeah, that was hilarious. That's fun. funny. That's funny. But yeah, yeah. So uh, I know, you know, when we, were, we were talking earlier. It's like a lot of times when you're trying to explain what the pig is, you mm -hmm. reference – some of the great brands that, that have played here, you know, yes, you know yes. Pearl Jam, Nirvana. And I told you, I was like, you know, I want, I want to be able, I want people to be able to say more than just Nirvana played there. So yeah. I have, I have tell, the give, dirt. Give me the dirt. Tell, the dirt. tell us some of those. And this stories. is secondhand knowledge. Yeah. Let's, let's be clear. This is, this show, all the Nirvana shows ha that happened here were booked by Lee Berry, yeah. who is now uh, the big guy at uh, Michigan theater up the street. Right. And uh, he, he did this for 20 years before we could even use the internet to research these acts. <laughs> yeah. So I, I still don't know how he did it, yeah. but um, he booked shows all over town. So he, um, he booked those shows. And when he gave me the job as junior buyer at his company, I, that was the first thing I asked him. So mm. tell me about Nirvana. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he said, yeah, that was crazy. It was just another kind of show for him. You know, it was just another rock band. I mean, he had, he had also booked Pearl Jam. He'd yeah. also booked Soundgarden. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, you know, Nirvana, they had, they had done two, I think it was two support acts, you know, open for Tad. We still got the, the flyer downstairs from when they opened for Tad. Yeah. And um, this was the Bleach Tour. So this was the first real headlining tour for them. Yeah. And the story goes that most people know is that that tour wasn't going so hot. It mm -hmm. was kind of a disappointing tour. And they just weren't maybe getting the numbers that they thought they were going to get. I don't know really. That's just what I've heard. Mm -hmm. And then they roll into the pig and we're sold out. Yeah. And they were like, huh? How are, How is the pig? I mean, and it was apparently like, I mean, you got to ask Dave Grohl, you know what I mean? But it's like <laughs> they were really getting down on themselves. Yeah. And then they roll into the pig and they didn't, maybe they didn't, weren't aware, but um, Soundgarden had, they, they played, I think, this is thing they played on a Monday, right? Right. Nirvana did. Okay. The previous Monday, Soundgarden had played, and they were already humongous. Right. I think they were already like way too big to even play here, but they just liked the venue or yeah. something like that. But they were huge, and that show was way sold out. And Chris Cornell was on stage, like at the end of the show, like, "Hey, you guys like this? Come back in a week. Our boys Nirvana are here. You're gonna fucking love it. You know what <laughs> I mean? It was something like that. Some he sort was the, of he shout gave out. That, yeah, the shout out. Yeah, for Nirvana. So, you know, this is Ann Arbor, and we broke that whole grunge thing in yeah. Michigan. Like this club was grunge central right. back in the day. So, um, so of course we got the Bleach tour. You know, and and uh, yeah. So when it sold out, it was like madness. They loved it. The Ann Arbor just. You know, I, I'm so spoiled by our crowds. Yeah. You know, I'm so used to it where, like, and again, YBN Corday is a great example where he comes in and he's got two Michigan plays and one of them isn't sold out and one of them has been sold out for months and yeah. that's the pig, that's you the know. That's the pig, yeah. And when he comes and then he's on stage and I get to see this Ann Arbor crowd respond to him and he's just up there like god damn <laughs> you guys are so into yeah, this, this you is, know yeah this, like, is, wow. this is not a big town this is yeah not a big, it's not yeah. a big town it's not what they would come in and expect to be yeah such a informed hip-hop audience you know but that's true of 
many genres here you yeah know? it's not just hip-hop yeah. but um but yeah you know so uh anyways so nirvana got that kind of love and um we're just feeling you know great about it and but the but that's what that's kind of what everyone knows yeah but what Lee told me was <laughs> he wasn't at the show or nothing. Like I say, it's just that's Lee Berry. He's, yeah. he's the Don Dada, so he's got a million shows he's thinking about at any yeah. given time at that at that point. And uh, but he comes in the next day, and like Lee would always get there. Everyone, Dave Clark, who's now at uh, Live Nation, he's real high up at Live Nation. But it was him, Lee, C Mac was the secretary, and me. And um, I always came in late. I came in at noon if they were lucky. But everyone <laughs> else came in at, at 10 or earlier. Okay. Lee always seemed to get there, like, first. You know, it was his company, so it made sense. But he was an early guy, you know, with that. And used to tell me, like, talent buyers got to get going at 10 a.m., man. Yeah. Like, you got to, you got to, I still haven't learned that lesson. But <laughs> he told me very early, like, bro, you got to, you got to, you can't let the agents beat you to the desk. Right. You know, you got to get the jump on them. But I, I'm i still working on that, Lee. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so he comes in his usual early self. Tries to open the door. Boom. Gets it like three inches. There's something blocking the door. Yeah. So he's like, he pushes his way in. And we had a couch like right here. Yeah. And there's a body on it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, someone's passed out on the couch. He pushes in. Someone's passed out on the fucking floor. And their foot is blocking the door. So <laughs> I'm talking about, yeah. if I'm, re you know, this is all secondhand. I'm remembering it. Yeah, yeah. But apparently they were knocked the hell out, right? <laughs> Whoever Passed it was. Out. Yeah, and like they had just gotten there, you know, the night prior, you know, like like 5 a.m. that morning or something for the, you know, and we're getting their first sleep. So they were crashed out. Okay. And, um, and then he goes, and he has no idea who these people are. Yeah. And then he goes in, closes the door tiptoeing over bodies <laughs> and uh opens the door to his office right the man's office yeah. right opens the door he's got a big chair like it looks like the boss's office yeah, yeah. you know what i mean it's that like yeah uh, like classic, in the movies right classic, like spins around classic, yeah man. but uh he goes in and kurt cobain is is passed out in his chair <laughs> his feet up <laughs> like the boss cry like yeah. the boss yeah. right Oh my God! That's it's awesome. the best story. That's and then, awesome. and so it turns out that was Chris Novoselic on the couch and Dave Grohl on the damn floor, <laughs> right? Crashed out. And this then, was after they played, or the before? after they played because yeah, okay, they didn't night. have, I guess they didn't have a place to crash or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they, you know, they're punk rock, so they don't give a damn. Yeah. Just give us a floor. We're yeah, good. So the the promo rep uh, at the time who worked the show. Was like, oh, just come back and crash at the place. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so yeah, that's I, awesome. Yeah, that was a great, that was a great story. It just, it just, you know, that's that's where they were at. Oh, where they're crashing cool. on yeah, floors. Yeah, and shit, that was at know? the that was at the office, right? Not here. Not yeah, at the, the, office. At the office. Yeah, he yeah, took them. Yeah. They didn't have a place to crash, I yeah. guess. So he took them up to uh, the that's office amazing. and said, "Crash here," you know, because we get. You know, I, I totally relate because I used to let bands crash at my place, too, especially yeah. when you first start. Yeah. You're so in love with every musician right. that you even get to interact with, right. you know. But, yeah, so. That's amazing. Yeah, that, was, that was a great one. Do you find, do you think you get, you have more pride in booking a, a, a large act, an act that you know is going to sell out or that you know that is, is, a, is a big name, or more pride in, in finding, in the discovery? Uh, really, I don't, um, booking a, a big name is great. The satisfaction is I get it and the L club doesn't, mm. or I get it and magic stick didn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's pride in that. Yeah. But, um, there's pride in, uh, maintaining this legend of the blind pig. I mean, we're, we get shows that are too big for us. Mm -hmm. We get first plays in Michigan, you know, on the regular, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so there is, there's a constant pride of maintaining that, mm -hmm. um, because when it, when it dips, I hear about it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? When, when the tours get too light, people are like, what are you doing up there? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So there's, there's that, but that, but the real pride is honestly, um, in, in the local music Oh, okay. and in, um, yeah. developing our scene. Like we have such a humongous impact on a musician's, um, development. Right. 
and it's such a like it's it's like i always used to say to the old owner like it's we have kind of a civic responsibility Mm -hmm. to get in there and mix it up with them and you know encourage the one the talent to keep going and to give them opportunities to to grow and because because i'm up i'm up here watching every scene develop right and they are down in their scene kind of closed off from each other right so the hip-hop scene has no idea what the death metal scene is doing <laughs> and the indie rock scene has no idea what the you know americana scene is doing that's pro- they're probably closer than that but <laughs> those worlds kind of do this yeah. but you know what i'm saying i'm up here like dealing with all of them right and they're all they all have similarities in their approach but sometimes it's like oh man the death metal band could really teach this hip hop MC a thing or two about promotion. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And it's like, it's cool to, to link people and to, but, you know. but then the beauty of the pig is that it, it, this, this place means something to all of those genres. Right? Yeah. There's not a genre yeah. probably that it wouldn't be, it's not prestigious to play at the pig. Right. And then except you, country, <laughs> except which, country. <laughs> which we're working on. <laughs> I've been chasing country music for 22 okay, years. Okay, all right. Man. That's that's with, what's going to happen in this with decade. With gusto. <laughs> yeah, no. No, we're going to do it. That's it's, funny. Next two years, country music is going to be like, our home is the blind pig, you know? It's going to happen, man. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's pretty much true. Our our main genres here uh, are uh, EDM, you know, the yep. DJs, yep. Um, hip-hop, and uh, the jam bands, yep. for lack of a better word. Yep. Those are our three main. Right on. And that's that's been pretty consistent for years now. So. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think t- to your point about local acts is you know to be able to provide a venue to for, watch them grow, to watch them grow, but watch also them that get record deals it's that amazing that has a prestige of yeah. major venues, but yeah. that they have access to as yep. they're developing is yeah not, not something everyone has. Yeah, and we and it, it's uh, the elite clubs in America. They they've got a few things in common, and one of them is that uh, that are our size, mm-hmm. the four hundred caps and smaller, that are elite and um, people consider elite. None of them ignore their responsibilities to their local scene. That's great. They get you, bad things happen. Yeah, you know. Yeah. when they do. Yeah. So that's uh, great. And there was a period. All the darkest days here at the Pig were when I felt like we were on the outs mm. with our local scene. That's huh. just, it's it's such a an unnerving feeling to mm. feel like a band is coming up and they don't feel like they have access to this room. Right. It's like, well, where the hell are they playing then? Right. You know, it's not like there's a bunch of clubs. This is in Austin, Texas. Yeah. So there's not a lot of options. And right. then to think that someone with talent uh, who was moving crowds or moving his girlfriend yeah you know in a real way couldn't couldn't just call me and get a show right sort of bothers me so yeah it gets harder and harder to do it especially if the club you know as a it's it's a it's a a fluid situation so as the tours if the if it's a heavy touring season i don't have as many dates to offer yeah the local music and um but even when it is after all these years it's to the point almost where we would have a super heavy season and I'd still be able to squeeze it up. Look at it. Yeah. It's like, a, it's, it's science and art, you yeah. know, yeah. But it's, Absolutely. it's alchemy, you know, Absolutely. but I, I love it. And, uh, we just got to get those local country acts in yeah. to really bring it, yeah. bring it up. It's so. a, it's a really different scene and I, <laughs> I don't know much about it, but I'm recruiting experts. Yeah. Let's put it that way. I'm right recruiting on. experts because I know my limitations. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thank Jason. That was awesome. Thank you. We'll uh, yeah. we'll have to do this again. Uh, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll get a couple. We only of scratched stories. the surface. Yeah, we have only scratched the surface. <laughs> Wait, let great. me tell you one more. Yeah, though. no, no. Tell me. We're, we're we got this wall in, behind us. Yeah, we're sitting in front of us. We're talking if, about Nirvana. If you're listening, if you're listening to the podcast right now, we are in the green room, and it is mar- I mean, there is just it's marked up. There's stickers everywhere, yeah. signatures everywhere. There's forty some years of. Of sticker or stickers and signatures on these walls. All right, sorry to interrupt. So, t- so, so, to so point it out. the most famous is uh, Nirvana. They signed it over there underneath that blue paint. Oh, that's where that. When it's the, underneath it's the blue on, paint. It's on this paint. Oh, right. Okay, right? and Got so it. you'll see the whole room is blue, right? Yeah. Except for this stencil. Oh. Of, it says Sea Fun. Okay. <laughs> but that's because someone messed it up on purpose. So it's supposed the, to say G fun. It's supposed to say G fun. Oh, that's awesome for <laughs> gangster fun. Oh, that's awesome. Who are a spectacular ska band 
um, from like I want to say the early '90s, but it may have been even the late '80s. I, I can't remember, but um, but yeah, we we had we had such hype yeah. over some of the signatures in this room. Yeah, it was it was more famous than it is right now <laughs> for all the things because there were so many like gigantic names that were uh, on this wall, and so G Fun came in and decided it would be punk rock of them to paint the whole thing blue and put their stencil here they without asking without it. asking they just yeah. painted the, over Did all the, the show. signatures yeah yeah they were feeling themselves they the show every time they played here it was sold out i mean they were huge that was a huge local band but um yeah sold out show shows over they've been paid they're getting their loading out you know one of the door guys comes up here <laughs> yeah and sees this and it's like and then sees this paint sitting here <laughs> <laughs> And I guess what the, I was, this was before my time, but yeah. they, um, they ran down and like chased him down the street with the paint. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's just, it's the most notorious thing anyone has ever done. Here. That is it's so punk that's, rock. That's insane. Yeah, they did it. And then what's ironic is I just got a call for, um, Gangster Fun's big, uh, reunion show. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's been like a long time, 15 years or something. <laughs> Gangster Fun's doing their big reunion at the Loving Touch. And I was like, oh man, maybe we'll paint their van. Yeah. You know I mean? Or make sure they don't repaint over all this again. <laughs> this is probably a ploy for them to oh, do it all yeah. over. No, no, it's not going to be, it's at a different club in Detroit. Oh, but okay. I'm saying maybe we'll like yeah, uh, go visit, visit them. them. Oh, go visit them. <laughs> Go visit them. <laughs> they come out, their van is blue, <laughs> and there's a blind pink stencil on it. That, what the hell? That you know? would be awesome. The North remembers. That you know? would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So can you, like, can you see? You can't see the signature, so it's under this paint, It's right? under the paint. We've actually talked about maybe having someone try to. Try to take it off. Try to take that layer off so we can get back to. Kurt I don't know. Cobain's I signature. almost wonder if it's better that mm -hmm. it's there. You just have to yeah, trust right? us. <laughs> yeah. Believe me, it's right under there. Yeah, believe us. Believe someone, us. Someone, someone actually wrote something like, you know. Kurt Cobain was here or something on, yeah. on the blue ones. Oh, on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, that's this, that's an amazing story. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. There's a bunch of stories, man. Well, I think, Jason, thanks so much. That was awesome. We'll talk again. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully soon. All right. All right. Take care. Yeah. You too, man. Yeah.